I know you've heard me say this uh, more times than you probably want to, uh, but, I, but I miss God's people worshiping together. Um, you know, there's that old phrase, uh, absence make the heart grow fonder, and uh, it, I don't know if that's always true, but I do believe in, for many of you, that the absence of worshiping together, gathering together with God's people on Sundays, has made our hearts grow uh, more deeply for our love of one another and our desire to worship together as a body. There, there's so much that we miss. We miss the singing together, just the activity, the children running around. On Sunday mornings, this is a busy, active place, uh, and we just get to enjoy that, that, those relationships. But most of all, we get to enjoy our time where we worship God together. You know, the longer we can't do this, um, not only does our heart miss the longing together, but, but what happens so often is we get frustrated by it. Um, and I've experienced that. I, I, I get frustrated by it. I get frustrated by the long pathway home because it's, it's going to be a long road for us to get back home to worship as, as we used to know it. But I think this is my thought for you today. I want to encourage you, though, that as you long for worship again, that we guard our hearts very closely, that we don't become so frustrated by it that we make our, we, we actually lose our witness and we fail to be God's people. One of the verses that I've heard so often regarding uh, and spoken in frustration about our not being able to gather together for worship is in Hebrews 10.25. And we remember that. It simply says that, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. Um, and obviously you've heard me, if you've been here before, preach on that, that we should not neglect worship because even when the church doors are open and people can come, it's easy for us to, to neglect it, to not see it as important and not, not see the importance of gathering with God's people. But, I, but this is the point I want us to focus on today. This meeting together doesn't necessarily mean church on Sunday mornings. Because really, with the author of Hebrews, he's not, he's not giving a big presentation. The entire context has less to do with our normal Sunday morning worship as it does to teaches us how to live as Christians. Because, as you know, the book of Hebrews speaks about the finished work of Christ. And as he moves into chapter 10, the author moves into chapter 10, and the verses prior to this one, it reminds us, it reminds us that because of what Jesus has done for us and because of the good news of the gospel and that we, through faith in Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven, we've been justified by grace, we have, we have been declared righteous and thus we have full access to the throne of grace, that's the beautiful picture and it should change the way that we live. And because of that, verse 23 says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. So the first gist of this passage is, is holding fast to the good news of the gospel. God is in control. God is sovereign over all things, even COVID-19. But the deeper truth is that through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, and we are sons and daughters of, of the God of all creation, our Heavenly Father. That's good news. Hold on to that faith. Hold on to it tightly. Verse 24, then it says, let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. You see, when the gospel is real to us and, and the significance of the, of the Christian body of believers is that we are here for one another. There's, those passages are all over scripture. So what he's saying here, the first priority in this case, in this same passage, is one, is let's consider how to stir, how to prod one another to love. In other words, in these difficult times, our, we have a, the priority to remind each other to love one another well. And we stir it and we say, are, are you loving your neighbor as yourself? Are you loving God as you should? See, that's what of our, let us, let us do that. Let's prod on each other to say, how is your love life? Yeah, you can say with your spouse, but more deeply, how's your love life with the Father and with one another? But not only are we to stir or spur each other on to love, but to good works. This is the beauty. In a time like this with COVID-19 and our, and our social distancing, there are so many ways that we can be a witness to the people around us. We can do good works. We can serve. We can love. We can make phone calls. 
The list is long. And really what we have right now as believers is this opportunity to really stir and to encourage one another to more love and good works. Then verse 25 says, not neglecting to meet together as some are in the habit of doing. Now, it is true that for the next week or two anyway, we're not going to be able to still worship together. We can't meet together on Sunday mornings like we normally do. But please don't think that that Sunday morning hour is the only time God's people can meet together. We can meet with just one other person. We can meet across the fence. We can meet still with social distancing. We can meet on Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, or on the phone. There's a lot of opportunities for us to meet and to encourage one another. Because notice what it says, but encouraging one another. See, this meeting together isn't just about worship. It's about encouraging one another in the gospel. It's about reminding ourselves and, and each other that the gospel is true. It's about reminding one another that God is in control of all that's going on. We don't need to be afraid. It's about reminding one another that, that, that we need to trust in Him. We need to trust in Him with all our hearts. It's about reminding one another that we shouldn't lean on our own understandings and our own convictions, our own, our own views of how things should change or, or even get caught up in the political debate, but to encourage one another in the gospel, realizing that we are called to be a people of love. We're called to be a people who serve, and we are called to be a people of worship. But until we can gather together, hopefully soon, very soon, in this building to worship, let's encourage one another. Let's meet together in smaller settings. Let's encourage one another in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let's see how God uses us. Let's see how he turns on that light and that we live as a people, as lights to a dark world, showing people the good news of the gospel. I'm Bob Warner, and I'd like you to think about that.